Hello, I'm glad to, to see, or just you see me. I, I imagine that you all here. Today we're working about radiation medicine. It's lecture for students five course. Uh, we have uh, we will have three lectures, and today is the first one. I am a doctor radiologi radiologist, Natalia Luchavitskaya. I am working in Grigoryev Institute in the part of nuclear medicine, most often with patients with thyroid cancer, and some another time with another patient. And of course, I work with students like now. So, what is this radiation medicine, and why you have to know something about this subject? I hope you was a good student in the third course and you know a lot of information about radiology when we when we have had a um, big information about different method of diagnostic and uh, which of them was with radiation exposure, which of them without it, and who were the good students, it will be easier to study now radiation medicine because it's very closely one subject with another and we have to talk about it and have to begin. What it means radiation medicine? It's some different subject. It's not radiology at all when we talk about uh, matters of diagnosis. This subject means different uh, scientist characteristic of effect ionizing radiation on the human body, the principles of the treatment of radiation damage, and the prevention of possible consequences or exposure to the population. How it's connected with other uh, disciplines? It's very difficult subject. It needs a lot of knowledge about different subjects like uh, biophysics, radiobiology, genetics, nuclear physics, normal and pathological physiology, hematological, uh, and biochemistry. Ionizing radiation. Let's remember in from third course and remember our information about uh, after school and all you know it's all time interesting all time look like new and every repeated it's easier to understand uh, what happens after before and why so ionizing radiation is radiation whose interaction with matter causes ionizing of atom and molecules Ionization, the process by which a natural atom in atom with no charge gains a positive or negative charge. Uh, we have ionizing radiation and non-ionizing radiation. To ionizing radiation, it's X-ray, gamma rays, alpha particles, and beta particles. In this place, um, Ionizing radiation divided for two big parts. It's uh, capuscular radiation and uncapuscular. To capuscular, it's alpha and beta particles and neutrons. To uncapuscular, X-ray and gamma rays. To non-ionizing radiation, it's radio and TV signals, microwaves and laser light. Types of radiation. Invisible, small particles in high speed, alpha, beta, and neutrons, and high energy electromagnetic waves, X-ray, gamma rays. Primary radiation, alpha rays or alpha particles, uh, most uh, examples, it's in nuclear of helium. Uh, beta rays, high speed electrons, Gamma rays, it's high energy with electromagnetic waves. And neutrons, no charge particles in atomic nuclear. What it means alpha radiation? It is a steam of helium nuclear processing great speed. The scores have a mass of four and a charge of plus two. 
they are formed by the radioactive decay of nuclear or nuclear reactor. Alpha particle, it's heavy and not very strong particle. So alpha particle, alpha particle can be stopped just small paper and it's enough for them. So we protect it from this, just simple glass or another material. If you remember this story, if you know about the spinal story uh, completed between Russia and Anglia, when Alexander Litvinenko was poison, some new poison, and it was polonium. Polonium, as you remember, is the first radionuclide was produced by people. It was Maria Curie. And polonium is simple alpha particle elements. And it was very difficult and going and terrible and going to the death of these people, these men, uh, after poison from this. What means that uh, found this radiation, it was acute radiation syndrome, and found this radiation in analysis of blood or urinary or another analysis was very difficult because we don't have a, um, in, in our usual practice, we don't have dosimeters to diagnose alpha particle decay. So it was uh, interesting story. If you want, you have to find in, in inform information about it in internet and read some interesting story about wave of this, about how was uh, changing the uh, doors and how the spinal go through the airport and why in the airport uh, policemen don't found can't found this. Uh, radiation. It's very interesting. Why they can found? Because it's alpha particle. They can stop just in a small water bottle, and uh, but it's very poison. Better radiation. It is a steam of electrons. Better radiation. Or more often, just better. Or positron. Better plus gamma rays, arising from radioactive decay. Better radiation and radionuclides with better radiation, it's most often material and was most often variant of decay, which we use in our radionuclide treatment. Because it's very useful when we can use radiation with the speed of the organism of the body, one centimeters. We can control how we use this radiation in the tissue and organ. So, if we talk about radionuclide treatment, it's always just better radiation. I hope you remember it uh, after our third course and repeat it now and remember for all your life, inside um, internal treatment, uh, radionuclide treatment in nuclear medicine, it's just with radiopharmaceutical with better radiation. Better radiation more stronger than alpha radiation, and it goes through the paper and can be stopped with thin plates made of wood, aluminium, etc. So to protect us from better radiation, it uh, needs some special devices, uh, gloves or special form, or it uh, can be used uh, more specific for radiation uh, stuff, material for save it, for tran transfer it uh, from one to another hospital and so on. So better radiation, it's very useful and all time useful in nuclear medicine in radionuclide treatment and can be stopped by thin plates made of wood or aluminum. And Last, gamma radiation, very, very strong 
predation with high emission of energy rate from the nucleus of the atom. So gamma radiation, gamma waves, we can use in nuclear medicine, it's for diagnostic and for treatment gamma waves we use just to external radiation therapy in oncological diseases. Gamma radiation can go through the paper, through the thin plates made of wood, through the, uh, and can be stopped, just lead, and other thick metal plates. Why? Because the molecular structure in the metal very strong, and uh, it can stop gamma waves, or just decrease this level. And neutron X-rays, emission of the high energy waves from the electron cloud of the atom. It's very strong uh, wave too. Uh, we can use it, you know, of course you know that we can use X-ray for all examination, a lot of examination and radiology. It's simple X-ray, plain X-ray, chest, it's basic of computer tomography X-ray, and we use it for external radiation treatment in several equipment. So I hope you know who was the first who discovered this X-rays uh, in several countries. The names the same like their father. This X-ray, and it's very strong, high, and not so safe for us. Uh, variant of radiation. Uh, neutron uh, can go through the paper, thin plates, lead, iron, and just stop on the water uh, at uh, some look like water and molecular structure. So neutron radiation, the emission of neutron from the nucleus and atom, very strong and power. If you listen about neutron bombs, it's very power and dangerous and different. So neutron more stronger than all another in our slides. Uh, Three most famous scientists in radiologists at all, all the world. You can see on this photo Maria Curie and Pierre Curie, and the right, right corner, it's uh, Henry Becquerel. It's three scientists who was the first to understand that material around us and as us it's all with radiation. And uh, after them, we know and count in measuring the radiation, like uh, Becquerel and Curie. It's international units for measuring radiation. Very fa famous, very interesting, all of them, like people. And if you have a chance, look uh, a lot uh, of movie about them. Uh, or cartoon even, and it's very interesting how it was in the France in the century of uh, previous, in the in the end of previous century. So very interesting. I offer you read and look information about these famous people. All of them Nobel Prize and their family continue their working, and it was Nobel Prize too. So, the birthday of X-ray uh, by William Conrad Rengen was in 1895. It's the beginning of a new period of medicine, new period of life, after this very famous knowledge, intelligent man. Radioactivity. Next year, Antonio Henry Becquerel. 1896. He was the first who understanding that some material have unstable form, 
some material with radiation decay, another one without it. And after this continue, continue new knowledge, new discovery, new stuff after understanding that world around us more interesting and more unknowledging as we know. Gamma rays, beta rays, uh, Ernest Rutherford. It's after two years after uh, discovering radioactivity, 1898. Gamma rays, it's Paul Ulrich Wheeler in the beginning of the previous century. Neutrons, James Chadwick, 1932. Very interesting listening and looking about these people look a movie read a book or some information in internet i offer you it's the first x-ray photograph was a picture of berger in Gens hand it was the first when people understand it and you can look very careful in the uh, bottom of this picture that it's mrs Rengen's hand and uh, it's a um, ring in her finger. So it's very famous. Radiation measurement units. We have to work in radiation medicine with dose of radiation. Uh, to understand how radiation dependent uh, with our organism, how it's work inside and around, to understand and a lot of information about it. People 100 years ago uh, talking and uh, as a result their meeting and talking, they try to count radiation and measurement special units. For example, exposure dose, absorbed dose, dose equivalent, effective dose, and collective effective dose. Uh, as I think more, more comfortable to you, then you stop on the pause our lecture, uh, have a, take a conspect and have this information most interesting. I sure it will be useful for you for our practice and useful at our uh, medicine life. So, I hope you do this and we have to continue. What it means each of them now we talk. The explosion dose, it radiation dose from photon radiation measured in the air of the ionizing chamber is called explosion dose. Explosion dose is given with the symbol X, system unit one, a lump per kilogram, non-system unit, it's Rengen. So, what it means, one more time, you look at the slide and trying to understand what means exposure dose. Absorbed dose. It's very important part because it, it completely with this dose we're working when we talking and when we treat a patient about uh, of cancer diseases by external radiation therapy absorbed dose how completely dose of radiation we give to the patient and patient like take after our treatment so absorbed dose what it means the amount of energy deposited by the radiation in a mass. The mass can be anything, water, rock, air, people, and so on. Absorbed dose is expressed express in milligrams. Gray, it was the very famous scientist too who discovered in the radiation and after that it's named gray. One gray, what it means, it's one joule of energy deposited in one kilograms of material 
So one gray, it's a one joule on kilogram. Absorbed dose is given the symbol K. System unit one gray, non-system unit rod. And relationship between them, it's one gray, 100 rod. So most important for you. Of course, you have to know all of our dose and understand it. But like for doctor, not for physics, most important it absorbed dose and units for counting or measuring this dose, it's gray. Equivalent dose. You have to imagine what it means equivalent. So we something counted. Equivalent dose is calculated for individual organs. All our organism and all stuff in the world have a different radio sensitivities and radio resistance. Some of us more radio sensitive, some of us more radio resistant. It's dependent of very a lot of factors and inside us we have a lot of different organ consists from different cells from different tissue so some of them very radio sensitive another one radio resistance and equivalent dose is for our understanding that uh, individual radio sensitivities or resistant organs and system Equivalent dose is expressed in millisieverts to an organ. Equivalent dose, what it means? It's absorbed dose multiplied the appropriate radiation weighting factor. So, for all our organism, we have different weighting factors. We uh, count it in the zeroth and radiation 20 factor are needed because different types of radiation like alpha, beta, gamma, X-ray, neutrons can be different effect, even the absorbed dose the same. So the one dose goes to different effect of radiation depending on what uh, type of organism, what kind, what completely organ or system we are radiation experience. radiation type and energy photons all energies and weightness factor we have one electrons muons all energies one weighting factor neutrons were more power five uh, ten uh, kilo volt to 100 k 10 uh, more than 100 it's 20 more than 2 10 and uh, protons more than 2 mega volt it's 5 alpha particles fusion fragment and heavy neutron effective tools allows to take into account what impact will the dose its different organs and tissues of sensitivity for which is factor use weighting time. Uh, weighting factor should be understood as a measure of the risk of long-term effects of exposure based on the radio sensitivities or individual organs and tissues. So energy in the sum of uh, effective dose and weightness uh, factor. Effective dose is sum for all organs of the equivalent dose to the organ times, the appropriate tissues weightness weighting factors. Effective dose of radiation. Let's calculate. So, tissue weightening factor, Lennart's 0, 2, colon, 0, 1, bone marrow, 0, 1, lung, stomach, and just, just down in urinary blood, chest, liver, thyroid gland, osteophagus, skin, and bone surface.
I want that you look at this uh, table, in this slide, one more, and understanding from what most radiosensitive, from most radiosensitive in degrees radiosensitivities to the down organs and system in our organism. System units for equivalent and effective dose is the zeroed. So we count equivalent dose and effective dose in zeroed. Dose of radiation after radiation exposure, we have to count like zeroed in our non system units, it's bare. And depending between each other one, zero, 100 gram. Collective effective dose. It's the concept of collective dose when we talk about big population of the people and they will after radiation exposure and we have to count how many radiation exposure they have to these people. So concept of collective effective dose has been introduced for estimation of negative value of the radiation exposure of the whole population which is determined is the sum of the effective dose obtained by irradiation person in the population. So collective effective dose radioactivity we count in Becker. Becker it very small uh, units and most often one what means one bakery one bakery the decay of nucleus per second radiation dose absorbed dose in a gray how much radioactive energy is absorbed by a material one gray the dose in which one jolt of energy in absorbed in one kilogram of substance. So how many radiation we take inside? Equivalent dose in zeroed, the degree of health effect on an organism exposure of radiation, zeroed gray multiplied by radiation weight factor, X-ray, beta rays, gamma rays one, alpha rays 20 so very active and neutron rays 5 to 20 and effective dose it's sum of the all organs of equivalent dose to the organ time the appropriate tissue weighting factor i think it's very good slide and it's like sum of five previous slide if you know about it if you have to understand it and repeat in the loud it will be easier with this subject and easier to understand it about radiation our background radiation comes from natural and man-made radiation and almost to about two millisieverts per year from what complete our background radiation? Radon gas from the ground, building and the ground, artificial sources, nuclear power and weapons test and other sources and medical sources. Some of part it's cosmic rays, food and dream. So most of all, for background radiation, it's natural radon gas from the ground, and half of them it's consist of us. You can see that part of me of uh, medical take a lot of part of our background radiation, but what we have to do, how we have to protect from radiation. It, um, it means that we use radiation examination just in that variant. 
is it really necessary to the patient? If to help population, we can use radiation just one time a year to understand that everything okay by simple plain X-ray of chest. And just in the cases we need more information about some organ and system, we can use another methods of diagnostic computer tomography and so on. Natural radiation comes from, first of all, it's cosmic rays which reach Earth from other stars, radioactive substances in the Earth crust, and trace amount of radioactivity on the body. Average radiation dose from natural occurring sources. Sources external exposure, worldwide average annual effective dose, we unit in millisievert year. Typical annual effective dose range, millisievert. Cosmic rays, zero four. Terrestrial radiation, outdoors and indoors. 0.5 and 0.306. Internal exposure without any counting. Inhalation, mainly radon. Ingestions, food and drinking water. And total millisiever in a year, two and four. Typical annual effective dose range millisiever in a year from one to 13. Man-made sources of radiation. So, medical uses of radiation fall out from weapons, testing of these weapons, radiation sources leading to accuration exposure. For us, like for doctor, more important it's uh, medical uses of radiation. I want that you remember that uh, plain chest X-ray uh, X-ray abdominal with contrast examination, urinary, kidneys, and another, or bones, it's all with radiation exposure. But of course, computer tomography, in principle, this it's uh, more power, dose of radiation exposure can be uh, used just for patients who need it. And all patients need for several categories. We talk about it later, but now just for understanding. Then in a young period, in childhood, in a young or very old people, we try to use radiation as rare as it possible. In one period in women's life, when they're pregnant, we don't use radiation anyway. We try to change this type of examination for another for ultrasound, MRI, or another without radiation exposure because it's maybe very dangerous for future. And um, what else? Repeat one more time that computer tomography, it's just a diagnostic procedure and just uh, with higher dose of radiation exposure. And just doctor decide who of the patient need of them or no. You can't go to the computer tomography center and ask, give me please computer tomography or my body because it's not safe for your organism. In some country, we, uh, they, uh, po uh, people have special radiation passport. In this passport, they count all radiation dose after all life of the patient beginning from the childhood, from all break legs, pneumonia, and so on, and continue, continue to another life. Of course, for oncological patient, when we need a high dose of radiation, as for diagnostic, we repeat computer tomography several times a year. Sometimes it's even every month. We have to understand the uh, sensitivities and working of chemical therapy, for example, or look after morphological changes, after radiation therapy. It's all 
have to be counted. And if you very closely look at the conclusion of computer tomography, you can find in the bottom of uh, this conclusion how many zeverts the patient take after this examination. What procedure give us more radiation exposure and uh, how it depending from uh, simple natural background radiation. For example, computer tomography, you know that we divided, uh, immediately we divided our organism for several parts, head, neck, chest, abdomen, and pelvis. And depending of radiosensitivities or radio resistance or this or another organs and system, it may be and it have to be different dose of radiation after this diagnostic. For example, abdomen region. Computer tomography, abdomen and pelvis give to the patient 10 millisieverts. It's the same like three years living with natural radiation, background radiation. Computer tomography, abdomen and pelvis repaired with and without contrast materials give 20 millisievert. It's the same like seven years after natural background radiation zone. So computer tomography, colonography, it's six, six millisievert. It's the same like two years. Uh, interventional pilogram when we diagnostic kidneys working, it's three millisiever, like one years without any radiation exposure, just background. Barium enema, lower uh, gastrointestinal X ray, it's eight millisiever, it's three years. And upper gastrointestinal part, uh, study with barium, it's six millisieverts. You can see that uh, high dose of radiation and do computer tomography or lower gastrointestinal x-ray with barium, it's not so safe procedure and we have to know after what diseases uh, if we found which or another, one or another kind of diseases, we have to use this method of diagnostic. Central nervous system, computer tomography head, it's two millisievert, the same eight month. Computer tomography head repaired with and without contrast material, four millisievert, it's six months and computer tomography spine, it's six millisievert or two years. Every time when we talk about central nervous system, brain, neck or spine, we have to remember that we have another method of diagnostic to this organ system. And this method's name, magnetic resonance tomography. It's without any radiation exposure. So if we have a choice between computer tomography or MRI, we prefer uh, MRI special for brain, for spine, for vertebra, for hernia between vertebras. This method without radiation exposure and give us more information than computer tomography instead. If we talk about metastasis in the bones after cancer, of course, computer tomography gives us more information in the bones, for example. Chest. Approximate effect radiation dose and comparable to the natural background radiation for computer tomography chest. It's give for organism seven millisievert. The same like two years without this method of diagnostic. Computer tomography lung, cancer screening, one and five millisievert, because we completely, what we mean screening, we know that lung cancer in some 
period, in some area of uh, lung. So we do not computer tomography all chest, just one part. And of course, it's decreased level of radiation. And chest X-ray, it gives us just one zero millisievert. Is the same like ten days. So do uh, chest X-ray for pneumonia. It uh, give us less radiation and enough information. But if we talk about computer tomography, if we talk about lung cancer or we afraid metastasis or the another variant of cancer to the lung. Of course, we need more information and it will be a computer tomography. Dental, of course, we, we all afraid stomatological and uh, as more diagnostic, sometimes as less treatment. So we re ready to do this as necessary as it's need. And it's not give us a lot of dose radiation exposure, just 0 0.005 millisievert, like one day. And heart. Uh, depending of procedure, if we talk about coronary computer tomography angiography, it's a difficult procedure when we injected the contrast into big uh, artery or vein. Uh, most often it's full with vein or artery. And this procedure gives uh, for patient 12 millisievert, the same like four years without it. And cardiac computer tomography for calcium scoring, it's three millisievert. But all time when we thinking about what most uh, effective to this patient, uh, when we count in what most uh, important for us, like for doctor, if we talk about uh, some ischemic diseases of heart, if we think and, and we have some clinical problem with heart and we thinking about surgical treatment, of course we stopped counting or we're just thinking, but what we have to do, we have to do this method of diagnostic and we do this angiography by computer tomography control. Nuclear medicine. I hope you remember after third course that nuclear medicine is part of radiology when we inject it or give per os radiopharmaceutical, so open radiopharmacal, uh, open radionuclides inside the patient and do some treatment or diagnostic procedure. Positron emission tomography, uh, positron emission tomography, and computer with computer tomography, it's hybrid uh, equipment, very excellent to understand it. This equipment show us uh, like functional activity of cells, like uh, morphological changing of cells. But, of course, we all have to pay and pay for this method of diagnostic. It's 25 millisievert. It's the same like eight years living uh, and take the same dose of radiation. And women's imaging, uh, bones densitometria, it's not a um, high dose of radiation for this method of diagnostic. And mammography, you know, for the breast, very excellent method of diagnostic, it's mammography, and sometimes it's complete with, with uh, ultrasound. Uh, and uh, mammography, it's not so dangerous for all organisms and not give a lot of uh, radiation exposure. Medical uses of radiation. It's diagnostic X-ray, nuclear medicine, and radiotherapy. Diagnostic X-ray, it means plain X-ray or computer tomography. Nuclear medicine, when we inject it or given by another way, radiopharmaceutical inside the body, and radiosensitive cells take this radiopharmaceutical and give us a signal like gamma rays, and we have to see this signal by special 
the equipment. And radiotherapy. Most often, of course, we're talking about oncological patient to use this treatment. Sometimes rare, unfortunately, this method of treatment can be used for some inflammatory diseases, arthrosis, and so on. But high dose of radiation for treatment, radiotherapy, it's of course for oncological patient. All protection factors can be divided in the three categories. And I will be happy if you, after this lesson, remember the three words. So, uh, teacher ask you, what radiation protection do you know? And you just answer, it's time, dose, and distance. It's enough. After this, you can understand it after our lecture and after you read information, you have to understand it how completely it's well. Protection by time. Of course, if we short work with radiation, our dose of radiation will be less than we stay and stay near the sources of radiation. How it's work in real life? For example, all computer tomography, most com modern computer tomography, I mean, they do uh, their work very quickly. It's 15 minutes to do, sometimes it's 10 minutes, to do one place of our organism. And after this, for several uh, hours, doctor analyzed a lot and a lot slides. Uh, pictures and images after this method of examination. How it's work with doctor? For example, me and radiologists like me who work with open radionuclides, who need to give these radionuclides to the patient. All my work that I have do in my office, I do in my office without any of radiation. It's a paper work, it's counting, it's understanding who of people, what need, all of this. After this, with my decision what I have to do in hospital, I go in a special place and work as quickly as it's possible. As me, as nurses, we all have some short time of uh, working with open radionuclides. Then shorter, then better for me, because I work with radiation day after day, month, years, and I hope a, a lot of years. Protect of distance. Uh, it's understanding too. Uh, when we touch something in our head, the dose of radiation will be higher than we try to do this, by special devices like in surgical, like aseptical, antiseptical rules, the same situation with radiation when we use special devices to touch radiation and shift to patient, for example, or touch radiation and shift to some equipment, and so on. And protection by special devices, by shielding, uh, we have our special place from lint. We, we go our hand inside the slit and special organic um, uh, special organic window uh, and all our working with radiation we do with special shelter. So time, distance, dose and protection by shelter. Uh, several next slides, it's about uh, radiation damages uh, skin and another tissue of skin. It's uh, pictures from our hospital. It's patient after treatment, uh, radiolog and it's oncological patient after treatment uh, uh, recti cancer by external radiation therapy. And after several months, it's beginning ulcer damaging on the skin. We talk about it later that it's maybe several variant. It's very difficult variant. You can see with um, aseptic, uh, with um, staphylococcus, streptococcus infections inside, with uh, 
changing in the skin and it's a very difficult part of patient need a lot of medicine a lot of surgical treatment sometimes it's transplantation on skin and need a lot of uh, and excellent uh, surgical aseptic and uh, therapist it's all after treatment primary concept so the result of treatment sometimes unfortunately it's um, more aggressive for the patient more uncomfortable for the patient more painful for the patient that it was treatment of cancer patient with uh, breast cancer after radiation therapy you can see the very big ulcer on the anterior chest reaction and uh, but prognosis a lot of treatment uh, a lot of uh, several part of surgical treatment and uh, after what it happened you think sometimes it's happened after doctor's mistake if dose of radiation were counted higher than its need for patient. Sometimes, and it's terrible, that we have individual radiosensitivity. And the same dose of radiation, good for one patient and terrible for another one. A problem like this happens not on second or five day of radiation treatment. It's patient who come back to our hospital after six months after one year after finish a treated cancer so patient thinking that it finish a cancer and maybe everything okay but after this beginning a process like radiation damaging and this process need a several several month for treated at all sometimes it can be treated at all and this patient die after this radiation burns with radiation ulcer like this I repeat one more time that all damages on these pictures, it's after radiation treatment, it's not after radiation diagnosis, it's all after some abnormal radiation sensitivity. It's maybe some kind of patient with hypertonia or changing in the glucose or diabet or cardiovascular problem. Uh, so very careful have to be radiologic radiologist doctor who count how many radiation need for treatment we all have international protocol for treatment we know which dose of radiation have be used for one or another organ and system but individual radiosensitivity and some clinical problem of the patient it have to be very careful and uh, needs a lot of uh, attention doctor to working with this patient mm, it's not very difficult to treat oncological patient if we have international protocol very difficult to stop reaction of our treatment to save a life patient after our treatment and save a normal clinical life of this patient this patient it's uh, ulcer and damages after radiation therapy uh, basileoma uh, under the eyes of course this eyes uh, can be functional and these damages very difficult for treatment and uh, very um, very painful for patient too it's very difficult i repeat several times i'm sorry but i want that you understand that counting counting and counting dose of radiation look at the patient stopped at the time all radiological treatment it's not so safe for us like we want this radiation damaging after radiation treatment too 
uh, most often it's after skin treatment, skin cancer, because we give a X-ray, high dose of X-ray for oncological area, for basalioma, for example, or melanoma primary tumor, and after several months happens something like this. Sometimes it can be treated, and patient need amputation of leg, hand, and and. Uh, uh, what equipment we have to radiation monitoring? We remember that we can't see radiation, we can't uh, look, we can see, we can touch, we can just count those of radiation. So we have dosimeters, radiometers, and spectrometers. Equipment for radiation, three. Uh, kind, dosimeter, radiometer, and spectrometer. What it means, dosimeter? Device for measuring dose of ionizing radiation of the values associated with dose, exposed dose, the absorbed dose rate, etc. If you was in a radiological department, maybe you can see individual dosimeter. It's like small. Uh, red or black or another color, small dosimeters like some box in the white coat of doctors. It's individual dosimeter. The inside have special material that take gamma rays and after this uh, in another special devices by we have to count how many radiation doctor or nurses take for this month. If the dose of radiation was higher than normal for this part of population, like radiological doctor, these doctors have to stop work with radiation zone and go to another work with paper, for example, or with people without radiation to give a time. If we change some one part, we go to another one. If we take more radiation than need, so we have more time to less dose of radiation and after this continue constructed dosimeters are composed of nuclear radiation detector and a measuring device usually they are graduated in units of dose or dose rate in some cases set an or alarm on Exciting a given dose rate values. Radiometer, it's instrument for measuring the number of acts of radioactive decay per unit on time activity. Uh, this instrument measures the numbers of particle crossing a unit area or the detection unit per unit on time, usually in private centimeters. Uh, or millimeters, usually applied to control surface contamination of beta and alpha emitting radioactive material. So, radiometer, it's instrument for measures numbers of acts of radioactive decay, so activities in time. And spectrometer, a device which can measure the distribution of the energy radiation, gamma spectrometer and alpha, and charge weight, mass spectrometry, etc. Uh, okay, I will be glad uh, to talk to you about uh, radiation one more time, repeat some information from third course. And uh, preparing to practice lesson. We have some manual material you have to buy it and preparing to your practice work. Uh, one time a month I give you three lessons. It uh, will be the second and third last when we're talking more closely about how radiation work in our organism on a cell level, tissue level, 
organs level, and so on. So be help, clean your hand, take a mask, be, be good.